Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today we are doing a PreSonus Studio One Keyboard Shortcut Masterclass. We're gonna be breaking down all of the keyboard shortcuts that I use on a daily basis to speed up my workflow in Studio One. We are going crazy with keyboard shortcuts today, but before we dive in, if you are ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process in its entirety, and really start to hone your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without any more of the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here to talk about keyboard shortcuts inside of Studio One. I have a whole list here that we're gonna break down. I made sure I didn't forget any. We're gonna skip some of the obvious ones. I'm gonna throw one or two of the obvious ones in because they are uber important, but we're gonna skip some of the obvious ones that are kind of universal here, like you know undo and redo and stuff like that. But the first one, obviously, the most important one here is Command S. So Inside of Studio One, in most DAWs, if you're working on a Mac computer, Command S is gonna be the keyboard shortcut to save your session. And the nice thing about Studio One, about most DAWs really, is that if you come up here, it'll show you the keyboard shortcuts for all of the different functions up here that you wanna, wanna go through, all the different transport functions and the save and creating a new song and stuff like that. But Command S, pretty universal shortcut for saving your session or saving your pro project. And that's something that's pretty much built into my left hand. I'm doing that every few minutes here in a session, especially when I'm tracking. I don't wanna lose anything. If the computer crashes or if power goes out or something, you wanna make sure you saved your session there and that you have everything up until where you left off there. So that's number one. You always, you'll hear about engineers having it like tattooed on their left hand. So every time they look down, they know to command S. It's a pretty important one there. The second one I actually use is right in, right in line with command S. Uh, it's something I use at the end of my sessions, which is the close feature inside of Studio One here. So you can see it's command W and that's something for me that's like also built in my left hand. So when I find, when I finish up a session or if I'm finishing up a project, I'll command S, command W, it'll close out the session there. And I believe there's one for quit too. I don't use that one all that often, well, command Q. So a lot of these are pretty obvious. Um, so like command S to save, command Q to quit. Um, you can use that to close out the window as well. That one might be universal as well for closing windows on a Macintosh. So those are our first two there. Let's see, let's move down the list here. The other one, uh, pretty important that I use all the time. Uh, well, the next, the next two or three here that I use a lot of the time are S, M, and R. So if you're playing a track, if you're playing a session here and you need to solo a track, maybe it's the track you're selected on. Um, if you don't know your arrows, your up and down arrows move through your tracks here. So a lot of times it can be a little bit tedious if you're, you're working around the studio to grab your mouse and to click on a track and click solo. If you have that track selected already, if you press S, it'll solo it. So if we hit play here and our track is going and I need to solo up a track here, I can just click S or I can use the arrow keys to get down to a track and click S as well. Sometimes that can be quicker than grabbing your mouse and scrolling down to a track, clicking on it, moving over to click S and stuff like that. Just S and S, right? Solo, unsolo. And so if I hit play here, let me give you an example of that, right? So the track will be playing and I need to solo up a track. I can just click S. Another one that I actually forgot to write down is uh, if you have a group of tracks soloed. So let's say you're listening through your track and you have the drum soloed up, right? And you wanna get out of that, right? You wanna jump back to listening to your entire track instead of having to go through and you know unsolo your tracks one by one. So let's say you have them all soloed. A lot of times you're not gonna keep your selection going. So after you hit play, you'll be clicking somewhere else, doing something because you have your drum soloed. Instead of having to go back and unsolo them one by one or re-highlight them. To unsolo everything and go back to listening to your whole track, the keyboard shortcut is Command Shift 
S. And you can see it'll unsolo everything. And if you click it again, it'll resolo the group that you previously had soloed. So if we have all of our tracks soloed here, or let's start from the beginning. I hit play, I wanna solo up my drums, and then I wanna unsolo them and listen to the whole track again. Makes it nice and easy to flip back to the whole track. And again, if you do it again, it'll re-solo the previous group of tracks that you had soloed. So that's solo. And then right along with solo is mute. So if you have a track that you're playing, maybe you're trying to find a ringing frequency or you're trying to find something that's bothering you inside the mix, you can kind of scroll through your tracks and mute different tracks until you find the problem area, find the track that's bothering you. So if you're playing your track here, all you have to use is M on the selected track and it'll mute all of your different tracks there. It's a nice, fast and easy way to scroll through your tracks, say if you're just looking at your drums, something's ringing out, you're trying to find if it's a tom or your snare, or maybe a frequency jumping out on your kick drum, it'll be nice and easy to scroll through, mute tracks till you find out where the problem is. Nice quick shortcut there. Another one I use right along here with solo and mute is the record and able function. And I'm not sure, no, they don't show you, I guess, uh, if you have something, if you mouse over something. I believe if you turn on the, why oh, I don't use this function, the help function, where is it at? It used to be, oh, this one right here. If you turn on the info view, it might show you where things are. I'm not sure. No, it just tells you what they are, I guess. Um, but if you come up to your transport and your audio, you can see what uh, record and record enable and all that is also in the keyboard shortcut window. So that's up in Studio One. And if you go to keyboard shortcuts, you can type in words like record enable and stuff like that to find out what the shortcut is. But if you are on a track, R will record enable it. You can see my voice bouncing around there because it's sending out these two inputs here for uh, sending back into my recording software. So that's record. If you have a group of tracks going, maybe you want to record and enable all your drums, highlight them all, press R, and you'll be recording there on all your drums. It's a nice way to get going on all your drums. Oop, I'm pressing the wrong key there to record and enable all my tracks. <laughs> but yeah, that's those are those three there right in, right in the control window on your track. Solo, mute, and record. I don't use the monitor one all that often. Moving down to a couple down here in the corner. We have Auto Punch and The Click Track. Actually, before I jump down here, the next one I have on here was to actually start and stop recording. So if we jump out here, if we have a track record enabled, instead of coming down here and having to press record, you can see it actually tells you. So the number pad, the star button, the asterisk, will start and stop record. So if I press that'll start and stop our record. The nice thing about that function is if you're playing and you just need to punch in a certain section, you can hit play, you can start recording, and then whenever you're done, you can stop recording and it'll keep playing. So if you wanna to listen to your track, then record at a certain place and then keep going, it's nice to have the record button there without having to reach down and press it down here with your mouse. Okay, now moving on down into this area here, it's a nice little segue. We have our click track and we have the auto punch feature. The record panel is here if you need to pull that up. So it'll tell you that one shift option R. But we have the auto punch feature, which sometimes I use, I don't use all that often because I'm doing the recording, I'm the engineer, there's an artist going in there. But if you're the artist also doing uh, your recording yourself, the auto punch feature is a nice feature to have here. And I have a video talking about the auto punch feature, but to turn that on and off, it is just I. So if we click I, we can see it turns on here, it turns red, and we can click it again to turn it off. So that'll be, if you have your loop set, if you turn auto punch on, when you press record, so if we record enable the kick drum track here, if I press record, it'll play, but it won't record till the loop hits. And then once the loop is done, it'll stop recording at the end of the loop section there. I guess I have to have the loop on, but yeah, it'll stop recording at the end of the loop and you'll only have the little section that you recorded there. So that's our auto punch feature. Moving on from our auto punch feature, let me put our loop back here in the middle. 
we have the click track. This is one I use uh, very, very often during recording se sessions. Um, it's nice to be able to reach and click that because my mouse always isn't going to be down here. I very rarely use the play button, the record button, or the click button down here. Even this button here, you can see the number pad zero will take you back to the beginning of the session. Or if you hit play, if you hit zero, it'll stop. And if you hit it again, it'll take you back to where you were when you hit play. So that's a nice one there. But the click track is C, and that'll turn on and off your click. You can see down here. I use this one when the click is going and we hit the end of the song. I like to be able to turn the click off so it doesn't show up in the fade out. So if we're, we're recording here, if I have the click on, you can hear our clicks playing. Maybe this is the end of the song here on the downbeat. I can turn the click off, but let the record enable keep going so we can record the fade out, but the click won't show up in the fade out because our tracks are fading out. That's a nice function to have there with the click track being able to turn it on and off with the C button. So I don't have to come up here and find the little metronome down there. All right, moving down here. Uh, another obvious one is the space bar for start and stop. So you can see if I hit the space bar, we'll start. If I hit it again, we'll stop. Same thing over here on the number pad. If you hit enter to start, zero to stop. And again, if you hit zero again, it'll take you back to where you started. And if you hit it a third time, it'll take you back to the beginning of the track there. Let's turn off the record enable here so that's not bouncing around. Moving down from there, um, one I use a lot that you probably see in most of my videos is one and two. So this is with the loop function here. You can either turn on the loop down here and you can see it is the, the forward slash button here. We'll turn on and off your loop function. And then one and two take you to either the beginning or the end of your loop. So one on the number pad will take you to the beginning of your loop and two on the number pad will take you to the end of your loop. So if you're playing and we need to get back to the beginning of the loop, so say maybe we're listening to this section here, we get about halfway through and I'm like, I wanna hear it from the beginning, I can just click one to take me back to the beginning. Those are nice quick shortcuts to jump around your different loop section there. And like I said, the forward slash is the way to turn it on and off there. Or the, the backslash button, sorry, I keep saying the opposite one. Okay, we're gonna get into some custom ones here. Uh, before I do that, let me let me tackle some of the ones down at the bottom uh, that aren't custom ones that I've, I've created here. Uh, and then these couple at the end. I don't know, I don't remember if those are custom ones I created. Um, one I use all the time, instead of coming down here to click the mix button, is F3. So F3 will open and close your mix console or your console window, your mix window. So if you do have that open in a separate window, you can bounce that up and down here using the F3 button. It's nice to not always have to reach down here and click the little mix button to open up your mix window. So that's that one there, that's our console. Um, those are custom ones I created. Oh, Alt Z is one I've started using recently to zoom out. So when I finish my session, I can press Alt Z to zoom out and see the full session, all the tracks here, and get my start and end markers placed correctly. So if you're zoomed in here, if you press Alt Z, it'll zoom out and show you, you show you your entire session. And then if you press it again, it'll zoom you back into where you were. So it's a nice one to see to get an overview of your session and then to come back into where you were, especially if you're really zoomed in. So if you're like really working on a track here, maybe you're zoomed in on one kick hit, to be able to press Alt Z and zoom all the way out and get your full picture is really, really nice there. And if you need to jump back in, you can just press it again. So that's our Alt Z. Um, oh, Command Click. So if we have a track here that's pulled down Maybe my drums are really, really quiet and I need to pull them up. Say I want to punch them back up to zero. So if I command click on the fader, it'll jump it back to zero. All the way down, command click, it'll pull it back up to zero. That's a handy one to have if you need to bump any faders up to zero in your session. So say you have your session you know, uh, flat, right? Everything's down and you're just bringing up tracks as you're going through. If you want to bump something up to zero, you can bump them up like that. So command click on the fader and it'll bump the fader up to zero. It's one I use when I'm pulling up levels in my session. So I'm not bringing up little by little. I like to be able to bump it to zero and then set it where I want it inside the mix there. Moving down, we have uh, command G is to create a group. 
So say all my Tom sometimes all group together. So if we click on our first Tom, shift click on our last Tom, and then command G, it'll pull up our add group section and you can name it Toms. And then when we click on our Toms, we'll be able to move them all together there as a group. That's a nice function to have, but sometimes that can get um, monotonous. So a lot of times I'll group my Toms to edit them and then I'll forget to ungroup them. And when I come to change the fader levels later, they'll all be moving together. So to get rid of a group, it is, let me make sure I do the right one. Uh, Shift Command G here. And you can see that'll dissolve your group there. And then you'll have individual control over your different faders again. So those are two I use quite often uh, when editing. So I can group tracks together to edit them. So like if I need to edit all the snares or both the kicks or all the toms, I can edit them together, create a group, edit them together, and then dissolve the group when I'm done. <clears throat> all right, starting to lose my voice here. It's still early in the morning. Um, jumping down to some of the custom ones I've created. So one that I use a lot, uh, when editing, when mixing, when setting up levels is one I've created with the plus and minus keys here on the keyboard. So plus for me bumps a track up 3 dB and then minus bumps a track down by 3 dB right on the clip gain. So to create that custom shortcut, you can go into Studio One, keyboard shortcuts. And if you just type in the minus button and do minus three, you can see it's a, one of the macros here, decrease volume by 3 dB, and you can set the key to be whatever you want. I have it set as the minus key, and then the opposite one, which is plus 3 dB, uh, the, the plus or equal key is what I have it set as. So you just put whatever key you want right here and then assign it to that. It's a nice one to have for editing, especially if you're going through to set your levels, right, and something is too loud. I like to be able to just click on the track, bump it up, or bump it down by 3 dB. It's a nice, just even function there to have it set wherever I want it inside of the mix. Let me make sure those are right where I had them there. Yep, so that's one of the custom ones I have for editing, especially on drums, but across the whole mix. So if the bass guitar is too loud when I'm pulling it up, I can bump it down by 3 dB and get it closer to where I want it volume-wise inside the mix. Uh, then we have some bus ones that I have set up here. This is something I use. Um, not so often anymore because I have these buses built into my template. But if I'm, if I'm mixing from scratch without buses or a template like that, this is one I will use quite a bit here. So we'll look at the kick drum here um, because, or no, we'll look down here. Uh, this is something you could do sometimes. So if I have the overheads and the room mics here, and you can see I have the kick drum sent to a bus, the snares sent to a bus, the tom sent to a bus. Maybe I want to send the overheads and the room mics to a bus here. So instead of having to highlight and click all of them, right click and then go to add bus for selected channels, you can see the shortcut I've created right here is command shift G. So I can highlight the tracks, command shift G, and it will add a bus for the selected channels. And the nice thing about Studio One is it will send the output bus, oh, excuse me, back to the previous bus, these three, oh, excuse me again, back to the previous bus, these three buses were sending to beforehand. That's a nice one I use. Like I said, if, I'm, if I don't have my template pulled up, I'll be creating different buses for different sets of groups. So like the kick drum, the snare drums, the bass sometimes. If I have a pair of electric guitars, I like to be able to create uh, a group for selected channels without having to pull up uh, that menu there. That's a nice one I've created. Uh, moving down here. So the last two I created actually, these were ones I created uh, when I'm doing different tracks. So if I have a bunch of maybe MIDI tracks that I'm bouncing out to audio, I like to be able to disable the MIDI track and hide it. I don't like to delete it because maybe I need to get back to it and change that sound later. So one I've come up with, um, I don't believe it comes stock in Studio One. I think it's one I created, but it is, yeah, disable track and then hide track. So these are two I put in. And again, all you have to do is come up to Studio One, keyboard shortcut, and you can see all of the different functions in here. And if there's any one you need to create or throw in, there's a lot of crazy ones that, you know, I don't use. Pre-count, pre-roll, I don't use very often. You can see start and stop are in here. You can put one in for the tap tempo. If there's a, a key, a specific key you want to tap, they have ones for video in here. But all the ones, you just find the function, click on it. You can see monitors U. You just click on it, assign the key to it, 
and move on from there. But disable for me is command D. That is one I've created, uh, especially for MIDI tracks. But if there's any tracks that I need to disable and hide, command D will enable and disable tracks. And then once I've disabled it, command, or not command, control H will hide it there. And you can see it's over in our window here. So those are, those are two I've created and I use quite a bit uh, when I'm editing tracks. So if I duplicate tracks and edit one and then I wanna hide the original or anything like that, I can disable it and hide it and have it there if I ever need to get back to it. That is all of them here I have on my list. Those are ones I use on a daily basis when I'm mixing or when I'm editing and recording to speed up my session and to speed up my workflow here inside of Studio One. And because we're finished here, we always have to save. That's the most important keyboard shortcut you will ever, ever learn. I hope that was a helpful, helpful one for you, especially if you're using Studio One. But some of these keyboard shortcuts are pretty universal. Uh, sometimes S and M, mute and solo are, and then of course, uh, save and the closed session are. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you are ready to level up your mixes and really start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and you can download it below to start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in the next video.